Demanding compensation for devastation From heat waves, droughts and floods, desertification and rising sea levels The leader of the Philippines delegation Referring to Typhoon Haiyan's devastation said In solidarity with my countrymen who are struggling to find food back home I will now commence a voluntary fast for the climate at this summit until a meaningful outcome is in sight. The conference led to an agreement that developed nations would offer some kind of assistance to poor nations. The amount to be determined at some undefined time in the future and that all nations would begin to start to try to cut emissions as soon as possible. I've always fallen for unavailable types. The one who always cancels dates. The one who only Skypes. I always wind up hurt, scarred, and sad. So I'm trying to change my tune, but know again that I'll soon fall for a bit. That I can love until it's dead I want a cute, strong predator to fawn upon And weep with bitter tears about the sad outcome that lies ahead And if it's possibly extinct or teetering on the brink An ivory pill who'll never call A panda who can't love at all A shark who won't communicate A polar bear who's always late I'll only want it more I'll only love it more My big, tall, charismatic megafauna The one who never cheats You're carnivorous, it's true I cannot live with or without you And if one of us must go I can't deny It's such a beautiful sorrow To watch you die Martha was a pigeon at the Cincinnati Zoo The last survivor of celebrity too Her family had been the most common in the nation Since disease from Europe swept the native human population They were social birds and they preferred to mate in a crowd Until Martha's last few years their mass killing was allowed In 1857 Congress gave the direction This bird is so abundant that it needs no protection Without a great big group, the pigeons would not mate And soon it was too late They went from billions to just you In the Cincinnati Zoo The last wild male was shot by a boy with a gun And so Martha was the only one Singing Oh my love
tent at night in Madagascar. We heard a pair of golden lemurs calling. Every evening they called each other as the golden dusk was falling. This woman had just made the distinction of this species right in time for its extinction. And then one night the female was gone. And the male sang alone. Each night into the night, every night he sang. Oh, my love, my love, where have you gone? Oh, my love, my love, is there no one left to love me? Oh, my love, my love. Am I the last living lemur in the world? He never found a mate, his story is done. And Martha's body lies in the Smithsonian. Their families are gone, and their song is gone too. And Martha's statue stands alone in the Cincinnati Zoo. There are ships that sail beyond the radar in nationless seas With containers full of undocumented refugees There are movements outside any known legalities There are watchers who notice things nobody else sees There are ship spotters Hey, I've been noticing activity around the oil breaks way up in Finland What were ships even doing there? Did anybody else see? There are surfers Who did any else keeps the crazy waves today the bird watchers crazy grand migration way way too early and where are the early warblers anybody else the weekend fishermen lobsters everywhere and what the fuck these crazy walking fish taking over every pond what the fuck man the gardeners the weather nerds the moms who can't sleep at night posting small instagrams and superb owl tumblers the evangelical youth groups the maids from the philippines the new orleans transplants the crazy obsessives National revolutionary group of amateur enthusiasts We watch from our bedrooms in pajamas We are Legion, we are Anonymous We are everywhere and we see everything There are cyber renegades, there are hunters, there are anarchists The high school kids who hack into the CIA Seattle And occupy an Arab Spring and we are we are anonymous, we are everywhere, and we see everything. We are young, we do not forget, we do not forgive. We are more powerful than nations, we can stop them, we can fuck up everything. We are legion. There are predators behind you somewhere in the trees there are cyber and black market and virtual economies there are ships outside the radar in unknown seas there is a world below the world that everybody sees there will be a world when this world is only Here in Churchill are crazy Like if you drive off drunk into the snow Past the Eskimo Museum and the missile silos Past the couple with the greenhouse Who make all that jam Past the guy who owns the trading post And all his crazy dogs Past the place where all the roads just end If you drive drunk there way out Towards the tundra and you crash your car You're a local hero 
Remember that guy who used to drive the snowplow? Yeah, he was really crazy. He didn't pay attention to where the streets were, and the snow here it gets pretty high. You can't imagine. One year he plowed up a great big drift, and in the spring when it melted inside, there was a bicycle, a motorcycle, a doghouse, oh, and a dead dog. One year they even found a body of a guy who must have passed out drunk in the snow and then got covered up. They didn't find him till the spring. Have you heard about Tommy? He was a guy here in town. He happened to be crippled, and well, he lived on the street. He was searching through the old freezers in the old abandoned Churchill Hotel and found some meat and lined his pockets with the meat. And a polar bear was nearby. And whether the bear was starving or not, and Tommy being a cripple himself, and he had a coat full of meat in the center of town when the bear actually got him. And the lady I know, I remember her telling me this story. She's an elder here, a native lady, and she said she told me she can still hear that man screams in her head. She said it gives her the chills. And you wonder what else is hiding in that ice. You wonder what will happen when the ice is gone, and you wonder what you'll do here if we can make it, and thinking like that can drive you crazy. I am the ship they call the Great Immensity. A train breaks wheat across the tundra to be carried across the sea. I watch the people watch the bears who watch for ice that isn't there. And oh, my journey is long. Around and round I will go to bring you all the things you need from here to there and everywhere. I cross the Northwest Passage where the British Navy sailed. When long ago a ship they aptly named the Terror tried and failed. How quick the masters of the sea descended into mutiny and cannibal activity. They died there in the ice, survived by just bacteria and lice. Their dreams of a new route across the world reduced to corpses and debris. But the world is wide, and the world is so small. This is the foundation of a house in the ruin of a village built near Churchill for the Saïcidene tribe. Nomadic hunters who had roamed their ancient homelands in the north, a society that lasted for at least 10,000 years. But the government in Ottawa thought this would never do. You can't just roam around the country freely killing caribou. Instead, they ordered that the Dene should be forced to settle down in a quiet little town like any good Canadian would. And they abandoned them with nothing on the outskirts of the town. And pretty soon their ancient social contracts started breaking down. And here's a plaque about what happened, how fast it fell apart. And on this bench you can sit, I guess, and think about what happened, how a people who were here once all are gone. Native woman who survived took us here and told the story of how the kids saw their people die. People falling asleep, drunk people freezing to death, fighting, walking around the train tracks, passing out and getting hit. One girl had watched her mom and dad burn up in the house. 
as her brothers and sisters watched outside. And nobody did anything, nobody came from town. People just don't like to deal with stuff like that. And after a few years, they just said it was inevitable. And the kids were left alone to save themselves. A wooden boat once saved each species two by two. When God said man had spoiled the earth and made a flood to start anew. And God spared Noah to assist him in this perfect little floating ecosystem. Saying, oh, your journey is long. Around and round you will go. And a dove brought hope to men, a covenant that they could start again. This is a picture of a sloth in a jungle in a tree. It eats and poops and sleeps on this small patch of earth. And it's perfectly adapted to this jungle and this tree. It's been doing this for five million years. And oh, my journey is long. From jungles to the city harbors. Ice caps and oil stations. Trains across the tundra. Fishing boats. Migrating birds. Forest fires, plastic gyres, wheat that feeds the distant masses, ships that drift around the world. And the world is wide, and the world is so small. We're the Earth ambassadors, spreading a message of hope in the we will show the world. Since I left you, I feel like I've lost all perspective, like nothing is real. And I feel like the last living man all alone in a boat with no hope and no plan. And you're right that I'm not optimistic. I guess when, like me, you just look at statistics. But it's crazy the way people say I live each moment like it's my last. I don't think past today. For the next 50 years, for the next 100 years, for the next forever, the next forever without us. The world will still go, the bacteria will thrive, and the grass will still grow, and the trash will float by, and the sun will still rise, and new plants will learn how to photosynthesize. But I don't want to be the last one with my little blue recycling box when it's done, and statistics can just leave you numb and statistics are deaf and statistics are dumb but like widows we wait for the ships that won't come and you were my contingency the stray chance that changed just who I hoped I could be for the next 50 years for the next hundred years, for the next forever, the next forever. I'm a little boat floating alone in the sea as a great ship goes by, never noticing me. But I'll just keep looking 
for what I can see, trying to look for each contingency for the next 50 years, for the next million years. It's a long I partied all of the time, girls, girls, just constantly making lots of money, a nice house I used to want, a big, big boat, everything was great, just what you'd want, except I started thinking about death, you know you live for 60, 70 years, maybe 80, 90 if you're lucky, and then what? What was it for? Making lots of money, getting a nice house, and a big, big boat. I was lying in bed one morning with my girlfriend. She was hot. We've been together a while and we were at the place of, you know, are we gonna get serious? She wanted to get married. Then she turned to me and said, is this going anywhere? And I felt God pulling on my heart. And I said, no, no. And I left. And she was gorgeous. What was I thinking? Then I stopped drinking. And the world I went home and I started to pray. Closed my eyes and I started to say, God, if you are there, he knows. Say something, please say something. And for a moment I felt not a thing. But then I heard it, the voice of the Lord. I found the answer. If you learn to listen, God will speak to you. I live the way I live because I want to be close to my God. And I am a Christian because I love God. I love to spend every minute with him. I love to spend time alone with him. I don't need money, success, or a big boat, or a big boat, you know? We are desperate for you. We are hungry for you. We are empty without you here in the middle of nowhere. Will you fill us with your love? Will you show us your plan? Will you show us the way to make your beautiful city? Where are we going? How do we get there? What is your plan for this, this, this beautiful city? Where are we going? How do we get there? What is your plan? And like a lot of people don't know, I'm not like Christian, like my best friends know, but my Christian friends don't know. I just don't know, you know, I just don't know. I just try to be friends with people who wouldn't judge me for being Christian. Hi, everyone. Hi, my name is Joe Lamford, and I will be your host for this evening's live stream benefit concert. A shining light. I'm coming to you from South Williamsburg, Brooklyn with my dirty quarantini in tow. Who am I kidding? This is just water with some olives. It doesn't matter. Let's raise whatever's in our glass, our cocktails, our mocktails, our kids' sippy cups, and everything in between, and toast to all of you tuning in to support the civilians tonight. 
Cheers. So it's a deeply weird time when things are deeply feared. I'm singing to you from my bathroom. Whoa, oh, and all the corner shooters do no goddamn good for us. We're only doing what we have to. Whoa, oh, that's why we're here, connecting Walker Coons. We are a park, but we are not maroon. We're still civilians. With something more in store, we're still civilians. So pick yourself up off the floor. We're still civilians. Just kidding. But I do feel like you are all in my bathroom with me. Now, the other performers you're going to see tonight are all unique and unbelievable talents from within our beloved New York theater community. Each of them emits the brightest kind of light. So we are in for such a spectacular treat tonight as they shine on us from their homes for the civilians' first ever, hopefully only ever, shelter in place benefit concert. A huge thank you to all of the artists who have contributed to their times and their talents to make this night happen. Now next is some very specific information about, well, money. I mean, the auction after all is one of the most important components of any benefit. So at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that you can directly and easily text the number 243-725 with a message that simply says, the civilians. And then you'll get a link that will bring you to see all of the items in our artist auction. Now, for those of you who have already donated and registered in advance, it's just the same website you've already been using. So you can go directly to thecivilians.org backslash bid now. And I genuinely urge you, do check out this auction. We have got so many one-of-a-kind experiences and tutorials, classes and performances from some of the best artists working in the American theater. And now, joining me live from not very far away in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, Civilian's Artistic Director, Steve Cosson. Steve! Joe! Whoa. Did that work? Does it look like we're looking at each other? Um, <laughs> that was a beautiful theme song. Uh, the acoustics in your bathroom are amazing. Uh, every cell uh, tape is going to be done here from now on. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, hello uh, and welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for gathering with us tonight through your computers. Uh, Thank you to everyone who has already contributed to, to do so much to help the New York theater community. Uh, thanks to our board of directors, uh, all the table sponsors, our table hosts, everyone who's done so much work to put this evening together. Uh, it's been quite an undertaking and uh, thank you all. And now I want you all to just take a moment and think about a theater experience that has stayed with you to this very day. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a civilian show. It can be anything. If it's a civilian show, that's a bonus point, but any, anything that has stuck with you. Uh, and Joe, do you have yours? Yes, and actually mine is a civilian show. It's The Undertaking, which you conceived, wrote, and directed. And the thing is, the reason it stays with me is there was this line that said, now release your grip on everything. And that feels like very apt advice for these times. So that that's mine. Oh, great, great. And you know, my collaborator on The Undertaking, Jessica Matrani, was just in my cocktail hour. She is logged in from Columbia. So shout out to Hi. Jessica. Hi. Yeah, Jessica. There. Uh, okay, great. So does everyone have their theater experience in their mind? I'm gonna assume that you do, so great. So. Creating that kind of experience for you, that's what drives everyone who works in theater. And obviously we can't do that in a real place, in a real room right now, uh, but at the Civilians, we're going to be putting out a lot of content online as long as the theater shutdown lasts. 
uh, and when it's over, uh, we want to be in a strong position to come back uh, and to be able to put people back to work doing what they do. So for that very reason, uh, we are launching a special fund tonight. Uh, oh, I left my phone on. I'm going to turn that off. Uh, a special <laughs> fund tonight uh, supporting artist fees. And that means that everything in that fund goes directly to the actors, directors, stage managers, designers, technicians, everyone who's involved in producing theater. Uh, and I have a very special announcement, which is we have uh, an opportunity uh, tonight because the Howard Gilman Foundation has offered to match every donation to that fund up to $15,000. What? So that's your wow. <laughs> very, very good. Uh, and that is the magic of acting because Joe already knew about that. So uh, well done, oh. well done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, so with that, that means that, that anything uh, that you contribute tonight to that special fund is essentially doubled. Uh, you can use the text message or the website. Either way, uh, we appreciate any any contribution of any amount. And, uh, and that's my spiel. So uh, I think next we have uh, a video, a little bit about the civilians, uh, and I think I'm out of here. Steve, you're done and you did great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, enjoy tonight and uh, have a great time. Good night. The Civilians is a really fascinating, in my opinion, theater company which uses the investigation of real life as the creative jump off point. A lot of people come not realizing that the play is almost verbatim material and that the songs are also verbatim. I think that's always surprising to me when people say, that didn't really happen, right? And I'm like, yeah, of course it happened. We say it over and over again in the play, it happened, it's real, this is real. You only get one chance to make it, to be a different kind of porn star. And soon those men will pay just for the privilege of watching me. The company, The Civilians, uh, we are always interested in doing subjects that maybe musical theater hasn't touched before, really. We spent a few months in the San Fernando Valley interviewing people on porn sets, going to the homes of porn stars, talking to producers and directors. We took all those interviews and uh, created a show about sort of a year in the life of the porn industry. Everything's based on their real words. And I wrote songs based on those interviews as well. Beth Wall wrote the book. I like to think it's a kind of strangely innocent view of the adult film industry. be more surreal than to have a beauty pageant in a prison that is falling apart. In the first act, you're introduced to the world of Bogota, Colombia. You're introduced to some of the political viewpoints in it. You're also introduced to the women. And it gives you a microcosm of these different worlds. Act two goes into the extravaganza itself. It goes into meeting the contestants, the excitement of what that is. When I began thinking about the play, I knew that I wanted it to be about The Simpsons. I knew that it moved forward in time. And I knew that I wanted it to begin with a group of people struggling to remember a Simpsons episode.
Hello, welcome. I'm so happy to be here for the Civilian's Benefit. I'm here to introduce the wonderful Eddie Cooper, who's going to be singing a song called I Know Now from a show that I've been working on with the civilians for some time called Talent Show. And that show is based on a series of interviews with parents, teachers, policymakers, administrators uh, in the charter school movement in North Carolina. And really that show is about uh, the growing belief that free market principles can fix public institutions. And it sort of begs the question of um, whether or not there still is a public interest or even should be a public interest. And now, without further ado, please welcome the very wonderful Eddie Cooper singing I Know Now from an interview with a lovely charter school principal in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, except maybe it was in Durham. I don't remember where he was. There were a lot of people. They were all great. Eddie Cooper, everybody. I was a principal in public schools for many, many years. I'm the director of a charter school now, and I will say this. What kind of light bulbs are those? Those are T6s, and there's a ballast in there. How many bulbs in this school? Thousands of light bulbs You say it's not a big deal But when you're changing 500 light bulbs You gotta think about how Charter schools are like their own independent district Man, I know now You say the parents can help Changing the light bulbs that's not as smart as you think You get these people on ladders Then they start falling Everyone makes a stink So when you're changing 500 light bulbs What are you gonna allow? We've got a stronger burden to do the non-academic stuff Man, I know now your plumbing goes bad, will you need to pull a teacher from class? How is lunch being served? Better speak to the cafeteria brass. Who's shoveling the snow, cleaning the sidewalk, or cutting the grass? When an air conditioner breaks in a public school, you don't have to negotiate between the different vendors to find the best price. Okay? When the school bus breaks down, who are you calling? Better find a garage. What is that gonna run you? Fixing a school bus. And did your budget that cost? Well, HR insurance and payroll It ain't a hay roll, more like a barrage Everything a central office at a public school does We have to do that because, well, we're the only ones here And man, I know that now Thank you, Eddie Cooper. That was fabulous. So, tonight's event chair and our Civilian of the Year is the brilliant designer Alexander Dodge. Thanks to the magic of technology, I'm now going to send you, all of you, right now, first to Los Angeles, where we're going to hear a few words about Alexander from the actor Jason Butler Harner. And then suddenly, we're going to be off to Long Island to hear from the man of the hour himself. Cheers. You guys, <laughs> sorry, can we just take a second to appreciate the talent of this evening? Oh my God, thank you so much, the civilians. This is an incredible 
night. Oh my gosh. I find myself thinking about all the transcendent theater that the civilians has created and definitely about our beloved uh, late friend Michael Friedman. Can you imagine the song he would make for tonight? It would be a song about time with like eight different time signatures and a 30 second or 45 second pause where we all just sat together. It's my privilege tonight to take a second and acknowledge the phenomenally gifted set designer, artist, man, husband, father, and deviant that is Alexander Dodge. <laughs> Actually, I have uh, acted on a number of Alex's sets and um, the first time was for a set um, for this play called the, uh, Observe the Sons of Ulster Marching Towards the Psalm by Frank McGinnis, a poetic, beautiful play about World War I, which culminates with a group of young Irishmen fighting the Battle of the Psalm, running up over this wall where they know they're gonna face their death. And the set was this huge ramp that we were gonna run up over, and it was a bright green, almost neon green. And there was a path in the middle of it that would look like raw dirt that was cut up chunky tires. Beautiful. So you walked into this theater and were immediately shocked and knew something incredible was about to come. So this juxtaposition of um, time, you know, accurate look, costumes and props and things like that. And then this very modern set. And as I've watched him go on and explode with huge, brilliant, passionate designs with innovation and um, technology, and then also return to uh, designs with, say, smaller budgets and simpler spaces, but still the same innovation and heart um, impact. Uh, he just blows me away. And what an incredible thing to honor him this evening. Alexander, I can't believe it, but here we are looking at your prolific career and getting a chance to celebrate it and you and for the artist and the man that you are. Congratulations, Charlie, Nicholas, and George. Your dad is really something that we are all so lucky to have and witness. Good evening, everyone. It is so wonderful to have you all here packed inside my in-laws living room. My name is Alexander Dodge, and I am so incredibly honored and delighted to be the event chair for this very special, special event this evening. I have been a huge fan of the civilians for many years and also lucky enough to be an associate artist. I was fortunate to design the civilians productions of The Ladies and Paris Commune. So when Steve asked me to be the event chair, I was incredibly humbled. I recently had the great pleasure of getting to design the sets for the civilian's wonderful, eerie, and fabulous production of Whisper House by Duncan Sheik and Kyle Jarrow. I was so fortunate to work with an incredible group of collaborators, many I have known for a long time, and some that I got to meet for the very first time. Unfortunately, the show had to shut down on the day of the first preview. However, I know the civilians are hoping to bring the show back in the future. It's events such as this one tonight that will make it possible to rehire the actors, the crew, and all the many people involved in making this and so many other productions happen. So a huge thank you to everyone who has generously contributed thus far. Speaking of Whisper House, I'm pleased to introduce Molly Hager and Van Hughes, who play two really good looking, smartly dressed, but kind of evil ghosts in the show. Here's Molly and Van, with Earthbound Starlight. What are you looking at? What do you see? Is it the truth or a strange fantasy? Whenever you're watching, you change. Is a place and this place is a song where mothers are distant and fathers are gone he too may be watching but he's not letting on he can't dry your eyes or say She can't kiss your 
cheek as the days become weeks. No rewind, no repeats. Days, nights, wrongs, rights, earth bound, stars. Is anyone listening? What is the sound of things that you lose that you never have found? Are you finding the way or turning around? Dancer with destiny, tempter of fate. The life that you lived is only a taste. Sometimes the sweetest. The time that you waste, steal your heart, steal your heart. Life is hard. Never easy. Descends, you run out of light. But when you go blind, you get second sight. The deeper you dive, the greater. That was so beautiful. Molly, Van, it's like you guys were born to sing together. I cannot wait to see Whisper House when all of this madness is over. Hey everyone, it is still me, it is still Joe, still with my sign, still in my tub. And of course, I would rather be gathered with all of you in person, but one perk of hosting a quarantine concert is that while I am wearing a very fancy jacket on top, it is a definitive possibility that I am wearing pajama pants below the frame. So sue me. But I, I really do hope that we can all see each other at a theater again soon, seeing a civilian show. Give me masks, give me gloves, I'll take it. Just please, let us gather. But for now, things as they are, I'd like to introduce our next virtual performance by sharing a little bit about the Michael Friedman recording project that you've seen some images and some video of already. Now, it's been a glorious and massive undertaking that has only been possible because of donations from people like you. In our 2018 benefit, we raised enough money to record nine cast albums of shows by the illustrious Michael Friedman, our dear friend and founding Civilians Company member who we lost in 2017. Three of those albums have already been released and we're about to release two more. Now, I think I have some visuals. Yes, okay, yes. Here is a visual of the record Paris Commune with gorgeous cover art by Josh Neufeld, who has done all of our album covers dating back to our show Gone Missing in 2007. And here is the cover of I Am Nobody's Lunch. Now, fun fact, the subtitle of this show says it all, and that is I Am Nobody's Lunch, a cabaret about how we know 
what we know, when nobody knows if everyone else is lying, and when someone or something wants to have you for lunch. Now that was an important mouthful because I feel like now we kind of know exactly what the show is about. And you're going to get to hear two songs from that show tonight. What's more is you can get both of these prints signed. These covers are going to be in the artist auction. It's a set price. We can sell as many as there are buyers. Now that's pretty amazing in my book. I'm definitely going to bid on those. Now, speaking of bidding, I'm going to bring the indelible CK Sweat to the screen stage. Now, if you've been to a civilian's benefit, you definitely know this guy. He is our amazing auctioneer. Take it away, CK. Good evening, everyone. It's so great to be joining you from North Williamsburg, a socially distanced six blocks plus from Joe. My auctioneer's gavel has been lying fallow the last two months, but tonight I get to help highlight the sensational auction lots available through your phone or the website somewhere, somewhere here, somewhere below. Now, yeah. you just saw that, <laughs> so, somewhere there. <laughs> now, you just saw that spirit lifting performance by Molly Hager, and Molly Hager and Van Hughes. And it's my great honor to point you in the direction of the respective lots in tonight's artist auction. Opening bids are only $100 a pop. Molly is offering the winner a song of your choice. I can think of a few Adele numbers that would make for a perfect late Mother's Day present. And the multi-talented Van Hewitt will offer up his skills to coach you in acting, singing, guitar, song composition, you name it. So many options for a truly one-of-a-kind gift. All funds raised through the auction go to support both the artists themselves and the civilians. You can text the civilians to 243725. There's going to be a menu. You can donate to the artist fund. You'll get to the you get to the link to sign up, and if you've signed up in advance, and it's in the same website, thecivilians.org backslash bid now. Wait, can we close up on that photo of Sam Pingleton, please? Okay, can we just look at that amazing face? I have to say, I really was just thinking about the let Sam Pingleton choreograph your custom wedding dance, or birthday, or bar, or bar mitzvah, or bachelorette auction item. And here's why. Now, this man is a dear friend, and he's a longtime colleague, and he truly brings joy and creativity with him wherever he goes. I promise you, the highest bidder on this item is going to have the party of a damn lifetime. People are going to talk about this custom choreo forever and then some. Okay, so do not miss the chance to get a dance from Sam Pangleton. And here's the thing. I want to talk about this special opportunity we have right now. It's a challenge match from the Howard Gilman Foundation. Every dollar given up to 15,000 will be matched one for one. And all the money goes to the freelance artists, the technicians, the crew, everyone the company hires to make the work and to bring it to audience like yourselves, ourselves. All you need to do is text the number here, right, right there below or go to the website and let's see if we can heal that, uh, fill that $15,000 match night. With this fund, the civilians can support artists making streaming content, developing new work right now, even while the theaters are shut down. And in the future, it means that there will be resources to put people back to work when we can all gather in the theater to get. If you prefer to contribute to the artist fees by check or by phone, look for that option on the homepage of the website and thank you. And now, without further ado, I am so honored to introduce the incredible Rebecca Naomi Jones. Now, if you've had any luck in the theater, you've seen her on Broadway in shows like Passing Strange, Significant Other, to her most recent revelatory performance in Daniel Fish's Reimagined Oklahoma. She's here with us tonight to perform her track from the album I Am Nobody's Lunch with the song America by Michael Friedman. She'll be joined on backup vocals by Quincy Bernstein and Brad Heberly, who also sang on the record. After this soulful serenade, we're going to hear from our playwright, Sam Chance. It's, uh, it's all yours, Rebecca. You told me you'd take me under your wing. You told me why all the Christians sing. 
You told me I had to do something, it was no sin. You said I felt so young inside. You told me why Lenny Bruce had died. You told me to just open wide and let you in. You asked me, do you understand? You asked me, do you understand? You asked me, do you understand? And oh, America, oh, America, oh, America. You promised land. You told me our way was the only way. You told me that Tom Cruise was gay. You told me if I didn't stay that it would warp us. You took me as we marched on Selma. You took me as we watched Scooby and Velma. You took me as you overwhelmed my habeas corpus. You asked me, do you understand? You asked me, do you understand? You asked me, do you understand? And oh, America, oh, America, oh, America. You promised land. You left me at the Berlin Wall. You left me watching you left me in the men's room stall without warning I waited for you to come into sight I gave up when the dawn turned white And now I see the cold clear light of the morning I'm asking do you understand <laughs> When you do a show with Alexander, there's always a dinner involved at a gay bar at some point, or maybe a drag show. I have so many anecdotes that I definitely cannot. Like I said, he's naughty. <laughs> he's gregarious, outgoing, charismatic, especially when dinner's involved. Oh, and one thing you probably know he lost his mom a long time ago but he kept her silver convertible and when we do a show he always drives that car it's a beautiful thing it's such a beautiful thing genius designer he designs beautiful sets he introduced me to a whole new world of thinking and every time he works the approach is thrilling he wants to push something to something we've never small cities finding late night food or having martinis there's always dinner involved all, all the dinners, dinners all the dinners, dinners and all the martinis the drag show bikinis the nice little naughty he brings then head back to the venue tech and the preview where he always reminds you the, the truth, truth which each of us clings We just, just want to make beautiful things And he always makes beautiful things Yeah, he always makes beautiful things Let me tell you the first time I worked with him The show was terrible, we all knew And I was going through some difficult personal times he was so important to me. He was positive. He was playful. He helped me open me up again. Gave me the joy to work again. The joy to work again. And 
And have you ever been to his Christmas parties? Those I never miss. I don't know what the magic sauce is. But when I work with him, my confidence in our success is high. It's very high, cause he listens, always listens. And all those dinner breaks are We were on our 35th or 40th show together. I've lost track. He's my favorite designer, cutting edge, up to date, and still, there's something old world about him. He's considerate, an old fashioned gentleman. We've been to each other's weddings, we know each other's children. And his mother in law was my real estate agent. Also, I don't know if you know, but he was once a concert pianist. Really? There's always dinner involved. <laughs> There's always dinner involved. There's always dinner involved. All of those dinners, all of those dinners, the late nights and sardines, the big Christmas parties, the nice little naughty he brings. Then it's back to the venue, the tech and the premium, where we all the truth to which each of us clings We just want to make beautiful things And he always makes beautiful things Yeah, he always makes beautiful things To know him's a pleasure A joy beyond measure It's thrilling because in whatever he does He always makes beautiful Wow, that really was an all-star cast. And Alexander, I hope that you just loved that because that was damn catchy and gorgeous. That's the classic civilians interview ode and it is my favorite part every year of this benefit. What does a girl gotta do around here to get one of those written for her? Hello, anybody? All right, yeah, it's still me, Joe, your host with glasses, just for fun. Okay. For real though, it is now my pleasure to introduce my good pal, Jill Sobule, who'll be tuning in actually live in just a minute. Now she kissed a girl back in 1995, way before Katy Perry kissed a girl and liked it in 2008. Jill did it better, Jill did it hotter. I used to actually stage manage Jill's sold out Joe's Pub concerts back in the day. And then years later, I had the gift of taking part in a workshop performed on that same stage for Jill's civilian show, Times Square. I consider Jill to be one of the greatest singer-songwriters of our generation. And this feels like a great moment then to say that if you have not yet put in a bid for the artist auction, just a reminder to text the phrase, the civilians, to the number on the screen right there. You can even win your very own Zoom concert with Jill. Last year, Jeff Lazarus won a house concert with Jill, and we actually have a little video to show you how awesome it was. TV gets to jam with her. Yeah. Oh! Okay, we said this before, but just think about it, okay? On Zoom, it doesn't matter how big your apartment is. You can invite 200 of your best friends. Jill will even take requests. Free bird, free fall, and freedom. I kissed a girl and I liked it. Listen, you request it, she might just actually do it. And I am back to say thank you to all of our incredibly generous donors. Big, big shout outs to Carolyn Sadlowski, Douglas Blaney, Kathy Evans, Sarah Persley, John Madden, Catherine Malone, Emma Orlov, Leah Shaham, Kendall Genre, Molly Malloy, and Robert Miyaki. Like, thank you. You have no idea how much this helps ensure that we have a vibrant New York to come back to when this is all yeah. said and done. And one of the things I want to give a special, special, special shout out to in terms of the auction is 
the, probably the best named of the auction items undergo a sinister journey, custom writing package from, from Ann Washburn. So yeah. here's the thing. If you don't come out of this shelter in place pandemic with a novel, with a play, with something, a creative object, you will regret it. Invest in your future sanity by ensuring that you finish that creative writing project you've always wanted to execute. And so a couple other little auction notes. You got a bit on the Molly Hager. Come on, she's not just a world-class voice. She's also a top-notch Zoom hang. In an hour with Tony winning designer Linda Cho, she might be able to help me figure out how to do a better Zoom background. A, a lot of design. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of design help is, is needed in a lighting consultation, a, a, a lighting consultation. Uh, I got it. Sometimes I have a hard time speaking a lighting consultation with Tony winning designer, Jeff Kreuter. Like I need a little bit of help with this. I need, I, I should be bidding on this. I have a lot more of these virtual <laughs> options to come. The point is keep donating to the artist fund and don't stop bidding at the auction because both will stay live for the next four days, along with the video of tonight's performance. So if you're an auction winner, you won't find out until May 15th. So keep at it until then. Jill? Is Jill there? Am I on? Jelly Bean, you're on. What are you singing for us tonight, Jill? Well, I thought about it, and here's a song that I wrote. Uh, uh, it's a happy love song about the apocalypse, and I thought it was appropriate. Well, that seems very, very apt. Take it away. Tomorrow the ground may shake Like they said it was bound to happen one day And the Hollywood sign will fall final call don't you fret don't be blue uh, you had me and i had you it was a good life it was a good good life tomorrow we could all be gone when the russian gangsters sell the bomb and the waves come roaring from the sea a hundred foot swells over venice beach don't be scared to take my hand we'll swim into the promised land it was a good life it was a good good life it was a good life it was a good, good life. Tomorrow a tiny cell might grow. And everyone, and it's not the coal. Or a hole in the sky will open wide. Oh, let me take that over. Shoot! A hole in the sky will open wide. The aliens land on the 105. If it comes to that, what can we do? You had me and I had you. It was a good life. It was a good, good life. It was a good life. It was a good, good life. I said a boom, boom, crash, crash underneath the overpass. Burn the buildings, flying glass, a good life. On the day the earth stood still, we won't have to pay our bills. As the mud slides down the hill, a good life. We won't have to make our bed, break out the booze. And like I said, let's have a ball before we're dead. A good life, let the pious rise above. We'll go down in our sweet love. It was a good, good, and everybody sang with me. It was a good life. It was a good, good life. It was a good life. 
It was a good life. It was a good, good life. One more time. It was a good life. It was a good, good life. <laughs> Is that Duncan? Is that Duncan? Hey, Jill. Oh boy, oh boy, I get to introduce, get to introduce you. you. Oh nice. How's it going? Duncan, I haven't seen you in Duncan, so long. Duncan, who's so amazingly talented, and we got to share a rock bus together. We did, and it didn't even break down, I think. It did break down. It, it did was break a good down. time. You got the bigger, you got the bigger bunk, though. So. <laughs> what can I say? What are you going to play? Um, what are you going to play? Okay, I'm going to play a song from Whisper House, um, which I was really honored that civilians were were uh, about to do it. Well, it made it to dress rehearsal before the craziness happened. So hopefully it will happen next year on the other side. Um, but this is a song called uh, I Don't Believe in You, which is not really true, but here it is. Life is like a sinking ship And you are at the wheel You see the hull is filling up you know your fate is sealed but Still you keep on trying To steer the ship to shore it's, it's time to learn the lesson You should have known before Well there's nothing you can do And me don't believe you. No, there's nothing you can do, and we don't believe in you. No, we don't believe in you. Life is like a ship at sea Where fearsome storms do strike And though you are the captain You can't keep up the fight The truth is there is much to fear And more to make us cry The ship is not worth saving As hard as you may try so there's nothing you can do And we don't believe in you No, there's nothing you can do And we don't believe in you Hate to say it, but it's time to face the truth, and we don't believe in you. You tried your hardest, you couldn't help but lose, and we don't believe in you. We don't. Believe in you. No, we don't believe in you. 
Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much, Duncan. That was a rapturous performance and we really appreciate you showing up live with us tonight. Now, really quickly, I do want to give a shout out to my parents who just yelled to me literally from the living room where they're both hearing me in the bathroom and watching this live that they donated to the Artist Fees Fund. Thanks, Mom and Dad! Like, literally right out there. I'm throwing it now to CK Sweat. You guys have been incredible. Alice Blaney, Dan Hartley, Louisa Thompson, Bo Brackendorf, Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we also got a $4,000 matching fee. Our total is, this might be a late total, but we're, we were at 8,350 not too long ago. To make a virtual fundraiser go this well, it's just remarkable. So I, I can't, as, a, as, as an auctioneer who has no idea what he's doing in this sector, Thank you. And now it's my pleasure to kick it back to our fearless leader, Steve. We can't hear you, Steve. Great. Oh, there How about you are. that? Yes. That, that was my tribute to uh, Raul Esparza from the Sondheim Benefit, <laughs> if some of you saw that. A little shout out to him. Thanks, thanks. So uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if you can see the full outfit, uh, but I've, I've changed into my after party suit, which uh, I'm gonna just enjoy here at home. Um, yes. So Shout out for those of you, you know who you are, who usually take me out after our annual benefit and keep me up until six in the morning. We can't do that right now, uh, but I'll get to bed earlier and, you know, wake up that much brighter and sunnier tomorrow. Uh, so um, before we close, um, you know, enormous thanks to everybody who's contributed so far. Um, we are more than halfway there uh, with this artist fund match, which is amazing. And the great news is that this video is gonna stay up until May 15th, uh, as well as the auction. So we have all those days to keep raising money. So this same link that everybody logged in on, you can share that with 6,000 of your best friends and they can contribute they can bid on the auction. Uh, if you win on an auction item, you will find out on the 15th. And we are confident we are gonna make the $15,000 match. Uh, thank you so much to everybody who has contributed so far. Uh, it makes a huge difference. Um, special thank you to Kyle Jarrow for making uh, that amazing song in tribute of Alexander Dodge, our event chair and our civilian of the year. Uh, and and I just wanted to say, you know, I know a lot of the the cast from Whisper House and the designers and the crew are watching tonight, and it was such a wonderful experience to make that show, and such a crazy thing to be cut off right before we were to have our first audience, you know, in the grand scheme of things, in this pandemic maybe not the most, not the most severe thing, uh, but thinking of all of you and, and being connected to all of the artists who perform tonight, I think it's been such a lifeline to remember why we do what we do. And, and it is the community of working together as theater people, working together to bring the work to you, the audience and having us all together that's the thing that keeps us going. And for as long as this takes, we are going to look forward to that time when we can be together in a room again. And I so look forward to that. And, and Joe, it's back to you to wrap it up for the night. Listen, Steve, thank you for that. That was really beautiful. And it's very true. I would say this is like a time of dark and light. And this is one of those nights that's a light shining a light. So please, as Steve said, 
The links are going to be up for four more days. The link to this video is going to be up for four more days. Please shine the light, spread it to anybody that you think would be excited to donate and to watch. Thank you for being such an incredible audience. Thank you to every artist who joined the show and took part in the auction and performed tonight. Thank you to Alexander Dodge, to our table sponsors, our table hosts who brought this community together, to the civilians board, of course, and our hardworking staff and our benefit team. And now, like the great Carol Burnett, we will end our show with a little, a little song. And in this case, it's the civilians benefit theme song reprise written by the ever clever music whiz and my dear friend, Nick Blameyer.